Long distance relationships do not work. And let me explain why. See, there's this old saying, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder, which is actually kind of true. But you know, there's this also this other saying, out of sight, out of mind. And that's the problem. See, you live in one city. The girl that you're with, quote unquote, is in another city. And let's just say for the sake of argument that it's impractical to go there easily on a daily basis. Maybe it's say, I don't know, a two hour drive or more, something like that, right? So it's too far away for you to get to this girl on a regular basis. And therefore you decide to do the long distance relationship thing, whereby you're gonna see each other, you know, once a week on the weekends or some shit like that. Or maybe once a month you're gonna fly out to see her or some shit like that, right? You're gonna do that? Well, let me tell you right now, the relationship is fucking doomed. Doomed. But why? Well, very simple. You see, in the past, you know, I always talk about the regulated sexual marketplace, right? The regulated sexual market. It makes me sound, sound fucking deep, right? But what does the regulated sexual marketplace mean? It means that there are outside social players, outside of the two participants in the sexual relationship, who are influencing the sexual relationship. For instance, an obvious one is parents. Parents in the past had a great deal of influence on a girl's choice of boyfriend, yeah? Boyfriend and potential mate. Uh, the, the parents could say potentially, oh, we don't like this boy. Or they could say on the other hand, you don't like this boy now, but we think he's good for you, so you're gonna marry him. And they used to say that and the girl would acquiesce. But for reasons that are too long to get into this uh, video, but I've talked about in other videos, you can check it right here. Um, the sexual marketplace is deregulated. That is, girls and men are on their own. There is no societal pressure on them in any direction. They're free to choose their mates as they see fit. Now see, because of this, in the past, a woman who was you know, seeing some guy long distance, well, the people in her social milieu would keep her on the straight and narrow, if you will. They would prevent her by way of social pressure from dating other guys if she had some beau in another city or another state or another country. I mean, if it was societally, societally approved, excuse me, they, the, the people in her social milieu would make sure that she was loyal, that she stayed true, to the boyfriend, wheresoever he may be. This happened because in the past, when a man left for whatever reason, you know, usually to find better prospects, right? He was concerned that the, the better prospects that he was pursuing for the sake of his mate and for the sake of the children that he would have with his girlfriend, uh, fiance, wife. Well, if he went away, and while he was gone, sacrificing his time and his energy and his effort to get better circumstances, while he was away, his girl or his woman went off with some other guy. Well, then it was all for nothing, right? And so there would be no incentive. On the contrary, there'd be a huge incentive for him to stay and mate guard, i.e. make sure that no other man came close to his woman and therefore not pursue the better opportunity not go away in search of better, yeah? So the, the, the tribe, the village, the society put pressure on the girl to stay true to her man while he went off. In prehistory, it was he went off to hunt the woolly mammoth. Then in, in the, you know, the last few thousand years, it was maybe he was going off on the army of Alexander the Great or whomever to sack some other villages or towns or cities or whatever. Then it was you know, to go to the city to find him gainful employment there and send money back to the village or his parents or whomever. But y you see my point. Throughout history, there's been the societal pressure on the woman to stay true to the guy as he went away. But that's no longer the case. Mm -mm. No, no sir. See, guy goes away and there's nobody back home in the village, in, the, in her community, putting pressure on the woman to stay true. It depends on her own personal morality. And the fact of the matter is, as we all know, because we're all human beings and we're all fucking adults, personal morality is subject to whims. If there is no societally enforced morality, a person's morality will change and fluctuate based on their circumstances. A woman can be virulently opposed to abortion, but if she gets pregnant and there's nobody around to pressure her to keep the kid, she'll abort the kid because it'll be more convenient. 
And, and you know, this, this goes for both sexes, by the way, okay? I mean, men are, are, are equally uh, uh, easy prey to relativistic morality. But we're talking about long distance relationships and we're talking why they don't work. Well, yeah, see, a girl, she will wind up going with somebody else if, it's, if she's in a long distance relationship because nobody's going to be pressuring her to stay true. I get a lot of messages, a lot of messages and a lot of fan letters, and I'm grateful to them. Quite frankly, there's so many that I can't really respond to all of them because I'm getting a couple of dozen a day nowadays. And, and it's, 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 it's very frustrating to me because I tried to keep up with them for the longest time, but it's just not possible. It's just too many. But I do tend to scan them at least to get a sense of the zeitgeist of my followers. And, and if any is just like really serious, I'll fucking stop and answer it, right? But be that as made, the point is you do not have any idea, you have no idea how many messages I get from guys saying that they're in a long distance relationship and then tears. It's, it's a cliche at this point, you know? A lot of these messages I realize that the guys are just letting off steam. They're trying to write to somebody to tell them what's happened to them, what, what misery has befallen them. And I feel nothing but compassion and pity for these guys. But at the same time, I understand why this is happening because of the deregulated sexual marketplace. Okay, so what does this mean for you in a practical sense? You cannot have a long distance relationship, period, because it is doomed to failure. And there's nothing that you can do about it. The girl is going to eventually lose interest in you and find somebody else, somebody more convenient, convenient in, in the practical distance sense of the word. You could be a great guy. You could be the greatest guy in the world. It's not gonna fucking matter hmm? because there's nobody gonna be around to put pressure on the girl to keep her on the straight and narrow. And you say to me that there's Skype and there's Google Hangouts and all kinds of communications technology and stuff like that. Nothing replaces the face-to-face, skin-on-skin contact. Nothing. Huh? It's a fact of life. You know, why do you think that so many businessmen, right, will travel thousands of miles to talk to some counterparty in some deal? Huh? Because the face-to-face -face thing is so goddamn important. That's why. They are willing to spend thousands of dollars on the tickets and the hotel and what have you, and all that time and effort and wear and tear on the airports and going here, going there, and to finally meet some guy face to face to talk about some business deal. Something that they could have handled in a Skype call. Why the fuck do you think they do this? Because nothing replaces that face to face, skin on skin interaction. Nothing. And so, out of sight, out of mind. That's what happens. You're not around and the girl's gonna forget. Or you're gonna forget her, okay? Because look, the fact of the matter is, I'm saying you know, that, that the girl is gonna wind up finding somebody else, but yeah, come on. Again, we're all fucking grown-ups. We know how it is. Guys, yeah, the girlfriend is not around. You know, he's at some bar. Maybe some cougar is there, which is kind of pathetic, but funny. Or, you know, maybe some hot young thing. And maybe she's not as hot as the girlfriend back home or back wherever the fuck, right? But, you know, she's hot enough. She's a warm body and she's here now. You see, it's the here and now thing and the lack of any kind of societal pressure. I remember when I was growing up in Chile, right? Chile is a third world country or kind of third world country, I guess at this point, but who knows? Anyway, in the eighties, right? I'm growing up in Chile in the eighties and I remember going down south for the summer, uh, staying at this lovely house with some cousins of mine, right? And the cousins, they were like five girls and they were fucking hot. Uh, they were all a bit older than me, right? But they all fucking blazing hot. I was like. 16 years old and and the next one up was like 18 18 through 26 and uh they weren't married yet but they all had boyfriends because they were fucking hot you know of course they were gonna get a boyfriend you know boyfriends flocked to them like flies on shit but anyway these girls right back in the day i'm talking the 80s and back in chile back when chile was really a third world country right these girls were away all summer in the south and there were all these guys hanging around, right? And all these girls, these cousins of mine, who had these boyfriends back home in Santiago, right? See, there was enormous pressure from the girl's parents, from the girl's friends, to be very, very good, as they said. You know, very tidy, i.e. not fuck around with some other guy. There was a lot of fucking pressure. And I, retrospectively, I'm really surprised. Yeah, because, it made sense, okay? They're down south, they're young women, they're gorgeous, there are a lot of other guys down south, 
you know, at, at, at partying and having a good time, you know, at the lakes, you know, and having barbecues and what have you, there was a lot of temptation. And yet these girls, and I remember their oldest sister who was married and had a couple of kids, the oldest sister would be like, don't fuck around, don't do it, you know, and there was like pressure and it was there and the girls stayed in line. They didn't fuck around on their boyfriends. Yeah. But now, sadly, that's not the case. Now, sadly, uh -uh -uh. all bits are off. Okay. And girls fuck around on their boyfriends all the time when the boyfriend is not around. Yeah. Now, a caveat to this whole thing that long distance relationships don't work. Now, if it's actually like a very serious relationship, i.e. it's been going on for more like a year, right? And uh, maybe there are a couple of kids involved, who knows, but for whatever reason, that one or the other has to go away for a, a set period of time, two, three, four months, then maybe it'll work. Maybe. Okay? But if it's something that, you know, they've been together for a year, and the guy or the girl gets another job in another city, and, and the other decides, no, I don't want to quit my job and move with you to that other city, I've got a great job here, the relationship's over. It's not going to work out. If it's like an open-ended thing, it's, it's ultimately going to be doomed. And it's going to be a lot of wasted effort and a lot of wear and tear and just trying to make it work, you know? A lot of foolishness, you know, like, uh, like I don't know, like phone sex or some shit like that or watching porn at the same time to get off at the same time as if you're having sex, which is just absurd if you ask me. But anyway, a lot of that shit is going to go down trying to ameliorate the fact that, you know, if you've been together with somebody and your paths diverge and the other doesn't want to come with you or you don't want to go with them, it's over, okay? And it'll last, I don't know, six months, maybe a year, maybe two years, who knows, but eventually it's going to fall apart and more likely than not, six months to a year into this separation, right? No matter how many times you visit one another, one or the other is going to cheat. One or the other is going to start fucking around on, on the dumber one. Yeah. It's, it's inevitable. I know this is kind of like a downer video, but you know, this is a reality today. And you know, like, like a toothpaste that's been squeezed out of a tube, you can't put it back in. You can't go to the past somehow, okay? And, and trying to create the societal conditions whereby the, the man or the woman are both gonna be loyal in a separation, it's, it's not gonna happen, okay? You gotta work with what you got. And this is what we have, like it or not.